All right, so let's look at how we hear. So what's gonna happen here is our auricle is gonna collect sound waves. It's gonna direct those sound waves to our external auditory meatus. So if we go to this picture, those sound waves move down our external auditory meatus, and they're gonna vibrate the eardrum. That's what these squiggly lines are trying to indicate, that vibration. So by vibrating the eardrum, they're gonna vibrate the malleus, which vibrates the incus, which vibrates the stapes, okay? This is showing the cochlea, right? So this is the scale of vestibuli, and as you can see, it becomes the scale of tympani. So when we vibrate uh, the, um, the stapes, the stapes is gonna vibrate the endolymph, I'm sorry, the perilymph, within the scale of vestibuli and the scale of tympani, okay? So let's go back to this picture here, all right? Down here is where that scale of tympani is. So if I'm moving the fluid here, that fluid, that perilymph that's getting moved here is gonna cause vibrations in this, the basilar membrane. So what's gonna happen next here is basilar membrane movements are gonna move these hair cells. And so these hair cells are gonna move up. And when they move up, they're going to touch the tectoral membrane. And by touching the tectoral membrane, they're gonna start, send a signal there. So starting impulse, all right? And so that impulse then is going to go, you can see here, uh, that impulse goes to our auditory cortex and our temporal lobe, and we interpret that sound, all right? Now, obviously, different sounds are gonna produce different vibrations, so different hair cells are gonna to touch, and these are gonna send different signals to our brain uh, to be interpreted. So that's how we hear. Now, one of the importance about having two ears is that by having two ears, this allows for triangulation. So if I hear a sound that I know came from over there, that sound that is made over there is gonna hit my right ear slightly ahead of my left ear. But that indicates to me that I know that sound came from that direction, okay? If you only hear out of one ear, you don't have the ability to triangulate, you don't know where that sound came from. Okay, let's move on to sense of equilibrium. Now sense of equilibrium is our sense of balance. So we're looking at two things here. We're looking at balance while you're not moving and balance while you are moving, all right? So the first is called static equilibrium. So static, you're not doing anything. So, you know, stasis, not moving. So this is a maintenance of balance when the head and body are motionless. So it's essentially sensing the position of the head and this occurs in the vestibule. So there's the vestibule. So, um, so that's between the cochlea and the semicircular canals. All right, so within the vestibule are two chambers. So this is trying to show there's the vestibule and we got these two chambers in there. One is called the utricle. So the utricle projects horizontally and then we have the saccule which projects vertically. All right, now both of these guys contain this right here which is known as a macula. Now macula just means spot. I don't know why they named it that, but anyway. A macula is a group of hair cells and supporting cells, so cells around it. Now what also this macula has above it is this gelatinous material. So, so gelatin, like, you know, like a you know, thick jello, right? Uh, so it's above and in contact with those hairs. And within that gelatinous material are these small little bone chips called otoliths. And those are gonna add weight, all right? So here's what's gonna happen here. So if you had head movement, so this guy has his head up, now he turns his head down. What's gonna happen there is you can see that when you turn your head, right, that macula is gonna move, right? So here, by turning your head down, here is that macula, oh, here's that macula, there's the gelatinous material. So if I take my head and I move down, that gravity is gonna pull on that gelatinous material, which triggers those hair cells. And by triggering those hair cells, that's gonna send a signal to my brain for body adjustment. And so what maintains our balance body uh, adjustment, that is our cerebellum. So that's where that signal goes. Now I should, I should also point that your eyes are involved in this and stretch receptors in your neck are involved in this to know if you are tipping or if your, bo uh, so if your body's tipped or your head is tilted, okay? All right, so let's look at dynamic equilibrium. So this is during movement. So this is a maintenance of balance when the head and body are suddenly moved or rotated, all right? So this occurs in the semicircular canals. So those semicircular canals um, 
Uh, I should point out they contain endolymph, which we're going to talk about here. Now, at the base of each canal is a swelling called an ampulla. And if we look inside of each of those ampulla, this is what it would look like. All right. And so in that ampulla, we have this other structure called a crista ampullaris. And a crista ampullaris, like that macula that we talked about, has hair cells and supporting cells in there. And once again, these hair cells are going to project into a gelatinous material. And this is a kind of a cone-shaped gelatinous material called the cupula. So that thing right there is a cupula. Now I want to point out, there's endolymph on either side of it. Okay? Now, if you've ever, like, walked, you know, somewhere and you stopped all of a sudden. So if you walk somewhere and you have a glass full of water and then you stopped all of a sudden, what you might notice is the water spills out in front of you. All right? All right, so what happens here, uh, also, let's keep with a glass of water. So if you have a full glass of water here and you turn all of a sudden, right, the water spills out behind you. And these are due to uh, the first two laws of motion, is that a body at rest stays at rest. That's with the turning real quick, the fluid stayed at rest. And then the second one is if I walk and I stop all of a sudden, we see the second law of motion, which states that a, a body in motion stays in motion, so the water continued to stay in motion, okay? So this is applicable to what's occurring here. So we have fluid on either side of the cupula, okay? So if we have a typical uh, head movement, like we all do what Ali Riesma does here uh, almost every day. I mean, you know, I'm constantly on a balance beam, flipping off of it, you know, just typical movement. I'm joking here, obviously. All I need is somebody turning their head. Just doing this, that's all I need for this. Okay, so you can see right here, that cupula, so that crista ambularis and that cupula, those are attached to the head, right? So, oh my goodness. So, so if I turn my head, as you see with that arrow, if I turn my head this way, that crista ambularis, and cupula are gonna move with my head. So, um, you know, if this hand is the cupula, I turn this way, that's what's gonna do. It's gonna move that way, okay? This is the endolymph. An endolymph, body at rest, stays at rest. So if I turn this way, that endolymph is gonna bend the cupula in the opposite direction of the head movement, all right? So that's what's gonna happen, all right? So if it uh, bends the cupula, uh, that's going to trigger those hair cells. Those hair cells are going to send a signal to my cerebellum for body adjustment. Okay, so those are the two types of equilibrium.